Good evening, guys. How are you doing? So nice to meet you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being punctual. So nice to meet you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for being on time. Let's see. So we have seven people, uh, including me. So we probably, I don't think that we are like too many in our group. I think that probably we are just like uh, 13 or something like that. I'm not really sure. Let me just double check. Let's see here. All right. Yep. So we are around maybe 12 or 13, something like that. But that's fine. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, so nice to meet you. My name is Gadiel. And I will be your English teacher for the next four weeks. Okay. So I think that we can just like kind of start right now. In, in the meantime, while we are waiting for the others to join the class. So, uh, well, let's see, guys. I'm really excited, and I hope you guys are, are uh, excited, too. I hope you guys have uh, really, I think, I hope that you guys are, are excited to learn and to improve, because that's what we are going to do, right? We need to improve. We need to be better. I know you guys can learn a lot of things. You are almost at the advanced level, so that's pretty amazing. I mean, you guys are really good. Bueno, vamos a ver, guys. Eh, buenas tardes. Buenas noches, perdón. <ríe> ya de noche, ¿verdad? Está por acá como que quiere llover. No sé dónde ustedes viven. Supongo que tal vez esté igual. Es un gusto poder estar con ustedes esta noche. Esta es nuestra primera clase. Eh, esta semana vamos a tener eh, clases hasta el día viernes. Normalmente nosotros nuestras clases van a ser de lunes a jueves. Pero en esta semana tenemos la ex excepción de que tenemos el día feriado, que es el 2 de noviembre, creo que es el día, vamos a ver, el día jueves, ¿verdad? Entonces vamos a, a descansar el día jueves y nosotros vamos a reponer esa clase el día viernes para cubrir siempre nuestras cuatro clases de la semana, ¿correcto? So that's basically how it's going to go, guys. We are going to have classes, like I mentioned before, we have four classes a week, like from Monday through Thursday. So we have class on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then uh, we have uh, classes for four weeks. And that's basically it, right? We're going to be here um, for each class from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's just one hour. I think that most of you probably are already familiar with the way that this works, but just in case. Right. Bueno, guys, eh, espero que se encuentren muy bien. Es un gusto conocerlos. Veo por acá Lisa, Walter, Kevin, Arlene, Arlene, pues espero que lo esté pronunciando bien. <ríe> Suyapa. Oh, yes, bien. teacher, hello. Hello. Uh, Dinora or Suyapa, how do you prefer to be called? I prefer uh, Dinora. Dinora. That's okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dinara. Nice, you, to, meet nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Really happy to be here. To see you. To see you. Okay, so we have uh, Mr. Aldana, Luis, and Mr. Rodrigo Hernandez. I remember you. And then we have Daniela. I think that she just joined the class. Bueno, muchas gracias por estar aquí. So evening. sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, uh, this is the first class. Probably uh, sometimes we have uh, technical issues. Uh, sometimes we don't know exactly if we have a class or not. So that's something that happens, right? That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Daniela. Bueno, muchas gracias por estar aquí, guys. Eh, yo también he tenido clases eh, de otras cosas de forma virtual y me ha pasado que alguna vez se me ha olvidado. Eh, bueno, a mí me pasó eso una vez. Fue como que no estaba seguro de qué día era la clase, entonces una no me conecté para la primera clase y ya luego, sí, porque me llamaron la atención, fue como que, bueno, ¿qué pasó? ¿Por qué no se conectó a la clase? Entonces, eso es algo que puede pasar, así que no hay ningún problema. 
todas formas, gracias porque todos están acá. Creo que la mayoría estamos aquí, como les estaba diciendo. Creo que somos pocos en el grupo, la verdad. Si no me equivoco, en el grupo que tenemos eh, de WhatsApp, habemos aproximadamente como 13 o 14 personas, creo yo. ¿eh? Déjenme revisar. Just double check on that. Vamos a ver, se me pierde por acá, hay tantos grupos. Vamos a ver. Tenemos 18 participantes, pero allí estoy yo incluido. Y también otras personas que son las que nos ayudan con los aspectos técnicos, ¿verdad? Así que, pues, somos poquitos, pero eso está bien. Mejor, ¿verdad? Creo que así podemos eh, todos participar, va a ser más fácil. Pero que así sea. Bueno, creo que ya estamos la mayoría, así que me gustaría primero que nada presentarme con ustedes. Y luego, pues, ya me gustaría que ustedes me cuenten acerca de ustedes. ¿Ok? Espero que todos se encuentren muy bien. Eh, estos días eh, está como un poco... Como que quiere llover, ¿verdad? No sé en su, donde ustedes vivan, cómo está la situación del clima. Pero, eh, bueno, es un alivio ver que todos están acá. Espero que todos estén bien. Y que no sean afectados por esta situación de las lluvias, ¿verdad? Así que, bueno. Uh, so, I would like to introduce myself, guys. Uh, my name is Gadiel. Let me just show you a little presentation here uh, so you can know exactly how uh, to spell my name because it's really weird. I have a really weird name because my parents decided that they wanted to give me like a really uncommon name. So at the end, uh, it's really like weird, right? Bueno, por acá tenemos, eh, nosotros vamos a estar durante estas cuatro semanas en nuestro módulo de preavanzado. Okay, es módulo 1. So basically, you guys have to complete this module, and then there are like two more modules, I think, like module number two and then module number three. And after that, you guys uh, can move to the advanced level. And that's it. I think that that's basically all the uh, English uh, learning that you can get at English Corporativo. Right? So, well, I want to welcome you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And like I mentioned before, my name is uh, Gadiel. That's this is my name, okay? Uh, and last name Guidos. Uh, it's kind of weird, but that's my name. So, uh, like I mentioned before, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to be with you here. I hope that you guys can learn a lot of things with me because uh, that's like the most important thing for me to be honest with you is that you guys can learn something, and I, I will do my best. So you guys can learn. And I hope that you guys have that willingness that you guys are uh, really excited about learning new things because that's what really matters here, right? So then uh, I have like this really short question here uh, about the module. So I would like to know uh, your expectations about this. I would like to know uh, what kind of things you guys expect from this, like, a lot of people tell me, a lot of students tell me uh, all the time, like they want to improve their speaking, they want to improve their uh, listening, or they want to improve their grammar. So all that kind of things. Uh, so maybe you guys can tell me a little bit about that. Maybe you guys can uh, probably uh, introduce yourselves uh, to the class and then say a little bit about uh, what your expectations are uh, with this module. So I don't know if anyone would like to participate and maybe tell us a little bit about that. Vamos a ver, ¿quién quiere participar? Ahí tenemos a Arlene. Ok, muy bien. Arlene estaba muy calladita, pero ahora ya se animó a participar. Muy bien. Excelente, Arlene. Right, so you can go ahead, Arlene. Please uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Arlene. I am 37 years old. I'm studying English. Uh, well, my expectation of this course is because I have a lot of grammatical mistakes or I, I need to feel confident when I speak in English and mm -hmm. not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I want to learn or I need to learn more about grammar and pronunciation and feel more confident when I'm, I'm speaking. Very, very good. Thank you so much, Arlene. I appreciate that. Thank you. So that's a really important thing, what Arlene said. I think that most of the times we uh, really uh, we are afraid 
because we think that we are going to make a mistake. And it's like, we we don't say what we want to say because we are afraid that we make may a mistake and then people are going to like notice that. But I think that we need to be able to overcome that fear. We need to be able to just say whatever we want to say. And that's the reason why we need to learn a lot of like vocabulary, a lot of expressions. And that's a really important part, guys. Uh, and always like like people usually say we don't need to think in Spanish, right? Like we don't need to think in Spanish. We need to think in English. Because when you talk to somebody, like especially when you talk to somebody that like a native speaker from the US, for example, uh, you need to basically express the ideas in the same way that they do it, right? Because otherwise uh, they may get confused or they will not understand what you're trying to say. So you need to basically learn like some of the most important expressions, right? So, and I, and I will try to help you with that. I will try to give you like uh, some uh, tips, some maybe uh, sentences and uh, things like that that you can use in your everyday life, okay? So that's uh, like one of the most important things for me. Bueno, muchas gracias, Arlene. Vamos a ver, tal vez hay alguien más por ahí que nos puede decir. Arlene dijo que su expectativa es como aprender a hablar más con confianza, ¿verdad? Eso es muy importante, la confianza. Tenemos que sentirnos seguros. Por eso estamos aquí. Creo que quiero que ustedes practiquen, que ustedes puedan eh, hablar sin miedo. Sé que a veces quizás cuando sentimos que estamos siendo grabados, que estamos con la cámara, como que ahí nos da un poquito de pena, ¿verdad? Decimos, ah, que voy a quedar ahí grabado o mis compañeros me van a escuchar y no me escucho muy bien o algo así. Entonces tratemos de no fijarnos en eso, simplemente pues practiquemos y ya. Si suena bien o si nos equivocamos no hay ningún problema. Vamos a ir corrigiéndolo poco a poco. Así que bueno, tenemos a Daniela. Daniela wants to participate. So you can go ahead, Daniela. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Daniela. I'm sorry for the camera. I need to tell that I never went to, to English classes or something. All I learned is I watching TV series, music, and sometimes at the church came people, American people. So I tried to talk with them and some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I know my English is not the best, <laughs> but I made I, I made um, the test exam, I don't know for the level and they told me, okay, you have to stay in this level. So I'm here. <laughs> I wanted to learn many things because I know my English is not the best. I have problems with grammar and some stuff like this. I know I can't understand when somebody is talking, but when I'm trying to say something, it's too difficult for me. So I, I, wanted, I want to speak in English like I do in Spanish. And I know that I, and I know that I need to improve many things, my listening, my speaking, my grammar and everything. So I'm here. I wanted to learn many things. I'm going to try to speak all the time because I know I have to practice and that's all. <laughs> okay, Thank awesome. you. Everybody okay. can say, can, can, call, can call me Daniel or Dani or Daniela, whatever, it's okay. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Daniela. I really like that. You're really good. I, I can see why they told you to be at this uh, level because you're, you're really good. Probably just like you said, maybe because you didn't have the uh, English classes like in an academy or at school or things like that. Probably you need to uh, learn maybe more grammar and that kind of things. But you're really good. I mean, I think that you have a really good level. So that's really good. And I like the attitude. I think that just like Daniela said, we all have like different things that we need to improve. And maybe for Daniela is grammar and then for other people, maybe listening and so we all have different things that we need to improve. So we're going to try to focus on that. Like, uh, you know, I think that not everybody is the same. We all have different needs and different things that are more like maybe challenging for us. So we are going to work on that. And the good thing is that we are not too many. So we can basically focus on that. Like, for example, if Arlene has problems with listening, we can work on that. And then if uh, Daniela has problems with grammar, then we can also work on that too. So, very good. Thank you so much, Daniela. Very good. Thank so Danny, you. Also. Thank you. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Right, so tenemos a Daniela, Dani. Ya escucharon, ¿verdad? Ella 
Eh, me gusta mucho, está con muchas ganas de participar, así que vamos a, vamos también a tener esos espacios para poder practicar como parejas, grupos, ese tipo de cosas, para que ustedes puedan eh, hablar bastante, ¿verdad? No solamente que yo esté aquí hablando, porque puede ser hasta aburrido, entonces mejor no, ¿verdad? All right, guys, so, eh, in this case, I would like to explain a couple of things uh, before we move on. So, It seems, it seems like, for example, Daniela is new to the program, maybe. So like I was uh, saying at the beginning, uh, we basically have classes from Monday through Friday. And our classes are going to be each day from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So it's just going to be one hour. And for this week, we are going to have like this exception because we have the holiday on November 2nd. So we don't have classes that day. We only have classes... Uh, from Monday, Tuesday, then Wednesday, and then we don't have classes on Thursday. But because of that, we are going to have our class on Friday because we don't have classes on Thursday. So remember uh, that you need to come to the class, basically, like you need to uh, connect to the class on Friday at 8 p.m., okay? So it's going to be for this week. And then uh, next week, we are going to have classes just like as normal, like, from Monday through Thursday, okay? And that's when it comes to the schedule. And then I wanted to tell you that uh, also, uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, let's see, when it comes to the classes, we have the platform, we have the website, uh, the English Corporativo website. Uh, you can uh, connect to that. Uh, I think that they sent you the link. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, they sent you guys the link. So you can access to that website. Let me see. Okay, creo que no nos lo han enviado. Lo voy a mandar otra vez. Uh, oh, sí. Vamos a ver. Well, I'm, I'm not really sure if they sent it already or not, but I'm going to send it to you again. And basically what you, what you guys uh, are going to do is this. Uh, so every week we are going to work on, uh, the course is divided into like sections, like section number one, section number two uh, until section number five. So we are going to work on section number one and section number two for the first week. And then we are going to work on section number uh, three uh, for the second week. So basically uh, you guys can go online, you can go to the website, uh, the English Corporativo website. Uh, so you can work on the activities. Basically there are like some different, let me show you. Déjenme mostrarles mejor porque creo que es más fácil si se los muestro que si se los estoy contando. O creo que eh, tal vez es la, muchos ya están familiarizados con esto, pero tal vez otros no. Tal vez Daniela, por ejemplo, no lo conozca. Esta es el, eh, la plataforma, este es el sitio web. Nosotros accedemos acá. Nos in iniciamos nuestra sesión, ¿verdad? Y tenemos nuestros cursos. Eh, cuando entramos a los cursos están acá por secciones. Tenemos la sección 1, 2, 3, 4 y 5, ¿ok? Entonces, para la primera semana tenemos la sección número 1 y la sección número 2. Por lo general, así es como se divide. Luego es la sección número 3 para la segunda semana, junto con este examen de medio plazo. ¿Okay? Entonces, nosotros venimos acá, empezamos con la sección número 1 y tenemos todas estas diferentes pestañas. We have all these different tabs. You have some the lesson objective first. Then you have a video about the class, about the topic. Like in this case, the first topic is going to be relative pronouns, a subjects. And then we have uh, the next, let's say, objective. And then we have the, the next topic. And then we sometimes have this uh, knowledge check, okay? Basically, this is what you need to do. Uh, you guys have these uh, little questions or you have this, um, uh, let's say these uh, blanks, so you can uh, fill them out. Like in this case, for example, uh, you need to uh, put in the, the response, the right answer to this. So basically that is what you guys need to do. Eh, tenemos que completar estas actividades. Eh, por ejemplo, para la primera semana, completamos todas las actividades para la sección 1 y la sección 2, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, ahí tenemos el enlace. Si alguien tiene un problema para acceder, eh, en el grupo de WhatsApp tenemos por allí personas que están como a disposición para ayudarnos 
con ese tipo de problemas. Como, son personas de, como de soporte, por así decirlo, acerca de la plataforma. Ya si tenemos, eh, vamos a ver, Daniela. Uh -huh. Let me check if I am underst understood everything. Okay, per week, we're going to study one section. Per week. Sometimes, yes, but in this case, for the first week, we are going to work on section number one and section number two. Okay, so um, I need to study after or before the class all the section and try to fill all the things and something like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, my vocabulary is now it's okay. it's poor. <laughs> that's fine, that's, that's okay, no, no worry, you're fine. So that's okay, Daniela, very good question. So basically, uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, basically, these uh, activities are designed so you can work on them uh, whenever you want. Like, for example, okay. if you feel like you can do it after the class, you can do that. Or if you decide that you don't have too much time or things like that, then uh, you can just uh, do it another day. Like, for example, let's say that you come to the class, then you have to do something like you're busy, you have uh, things to do, for example, then you can do it uh, a different day. The only thing is that we need to complete these sections, like section number one and section number two, by Thursday in this case. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, muy bien. Muchas gracias, Daniela. Eh, por eso les quería explicar antes. Eh, sé que tal vez algunos ya lo conocen, pero tal vez otros no estamos familiarizados todavía. Entonces, eh, para esta semana, nosotros vamos a trabajar en la sección 1 y la 2. Ok. Pues ustedes vienen, eh, digamos de que ahora pueden hacerlo, tienen tiempo, tienen eh, ganas de hacerlo, por ejemplo. Lo pueden hacer, pueden ustedes revisar acá. Vienen, revisan la clase. Uh, como ustedes gusten en cualquier momento pero si no pueden hacerlo pueden hacerlo otro día solamente que eh, para el caso de las secciones que vamos a ir trabajando por lo general tienen que estar completadas para el final de la semana por así decirlo en este caso tendría que ser para el jueves por lo general eh, o si no pues a veces puede ser para el viernes creo que esta semana tal vez pudiera ser para el viernes pero por lo general ya para el jueves tendríamos que tener completadas todas las actividades y si ustedes, digamos, tienen alguna pregunta o algo, no, no les sale un ejercicio, porque a veces pasa, a veces por un pequeño puntito, un pequeño signo, puede ser que por ahí no nos salga bien. Eh, en esos casos, pues, pueden también informar en el grupo de WhatsApp que tenemos. Ustedes dicen ahí, bueno, tengo problemas con este ejercicio, no sé si alguien ya lo pudo hacer o algo por el estilo. Y pues, entre todos nos ayudamos, ¿ok? Eh, digamos, un compañero lo, ya lo hizo, esta persona puede venir y ayudarle a la persona que está con eh, problemas o pues también por mi parte yo estoy pendiente por ahí y yo les puedo ayudar si, tengo, si tienen algún problema ¿ok? así que eso es lo que vamos a estar haciendo eso sería para las siguientes eh, cuatro semanas ¿verdad? tenemos clases déjenme ver uno, dos, tres, ok, por acá creo que terminaríamos el 23 de noviembre si no me equivoco ya casi para vacaciones guys <ríe> Muy bien, ¿verdad? La mejor época del año. A mí, me, esta es mi época favorita. No sé, no sé eh, ustedes, pero a mí me gusta bastante. I think that this is the best time of the year. All right, guys. So, vamos a ver. Creo que eh, luego de esta introducción, digamos, acerca de cómo funciona el, el, el plan, el módulo, por así decirlo. Eh, ¿Tienen alguna pregunta en este momento? ¿Alguien? Well, it's clear for me. Very good. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate that. All right. So, bueno, si no tenemos preguntas, vamos a continuar. No sé si alguien más le gustaría presentarse, eh, contarnos un poco acerca de ustedes, sus expectativas. Me, teacher. Okay, very good. Go ahead, Jonathan. Well, um, sorry for my voice. I have a big of sore throat that and my name is jonathan but i like to my friends call me john i like to learn many things every day my dream is to build bilingual is to be able to communicate with people when i travel the world and i also want to be a web developer web is the reason for i want to learn english very good very good thank you so much jonathan that's awesome i mean i think that yeah. when it comes to computers and Uh, computer systems that's really uh, really good uh, like field I, I think that in these days 
especially uh, everything is uh, like online and on computers. So that's really awesome. Very good, very good. So I like it, I like it. Yeah, guys, I think that, uh, I think that in these days we need to, we all need to learn a little bit about uh, computers and how they work and how to uh, handle computer systems because that's basically where everything is going, like computers. Así que muy bien, muy, muchas gracias, Jonathan. Eh, perfecto. Vamos a ver, ¿alguien más que quiera contarnos acerca de sus expectativas, eh, presentarse con la clase? Me. Ok, go ahead, Evelyn. Ok, hello, my name is Evelyn Juárez. I am Terry years old and I am a doctor and I like the English and the other language and I remember that I I have around uh, two years learning English and I would like to, to learn it more because I feel that I have the problem on this day with my pronunciation mm -hmm. or when I when I did talk with the other because I consider that my writing and greeting is nice. I don't have problem with it. Um I around this call uh, I hope that I can improve my English and I can talk with the other the other classmen and, and my teacher too. And I would like to to know about for example the different topic in in all the in instant calling moments for example. And um, only that, I okay. consider that I am a excellent student, but in some cases, I have problem to understand the different topic, for example, uh, the different uh, um, example, for example, the, the adjective, the subject. And for me, in this situation is, is in some cases, it's difficult, but in other, no. Mm. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you are a doctor. So what kind of doctor are you? Are you a primary care doctor or family doctor, maybe? I, I am a general. General okay. doctor. All right, I see. Very good. Very good. Nice. Uh, that's very good. And you said that, well, that you don't have too much trouble when it comes to writing and that kind of things, but you would like to improve your uh, pronunciation, uh, your vocabulary, so you can talk to others, right? Yes. Very good, very good. Thank you so much, Evelyn. I appreciate that. So, yep, uh, very good. Okay, ya tenemos a Melissa por acá. Vamos a ver qué dice Melissa o oh, Esmeralda. Vamos a ver. Melissa, it's okay. Melissa, okay, thank you. Go ahead, Melissa. Hello, everybody. My name is Melissa Gutierrez. I am 20 seven years old, I'm an accountant, but now I'm working at a fabric. Okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of factory at is it? At a factory, at okay. a factory. And I like English and my expectation of the model is learn a lot of English improve my fluency at speaking mm -hmm. and feel more confident when I am speaking. Very good. Thank and you so much. That. Awesome. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Melissa. And what kind of factory is it? Uh, what kind of product do they manufacture? The um, clothes, clothes for Nike, Under okay. Armour. Oh. Nice. And Patagonia. Awesome. Maybe you can get us some clothes for no. the class. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> Why not? That's really mean. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. Just kidding. <laughs> well, very good. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. Bueno. <laughs> ya ven, tenemos a Melissa por acá. Eh, eh, muy bien. Ella trabaja para una fábrica que produce prendas de vestir. La ropa, marca Nike. Under Armour. Okay, muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Melissa. I appreciate that. So, Melissa wants to improve her uh, pronunciation, her fluency, that kind of things, right? Very good. We can work on that. 
we are going to work on that, guys. I think that probably when it comes to these levels, like when you are at the advanced levels, I think that the most important thing probably is to be able to talk, like to communicate with others, right? Because you guys probably have a lot of knowledge when it comes to grammar. So I, I don't think that that's something that we spend too much time. Bueno, vamos a ver. No sé si alguien más por ahí que se nos haya quedado. Tenemos a Jonathan, Melissa, Evelyn, Daniela, Arlen. Vamos a ver, no sé si alguien más quiere por acá. Tenemos a Jacqueline. Vamos a ver qué nos dice Jacqueline. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay, my expectation for this uh, course is, uh, like the other says, is to get fluency and improve my my vocabulary and uh, to feel confident speaking with native people. Awesome. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Jacqueline, you, Jacqueline, right? Yes, or Jackie. Oh, Jackie. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jackie. So that's very good. I think that you guys are really good. I'm not going to lie. I think that you guys have a really good uh, vocabulary. You guys have a really good uh, speaking skills. So uh, this is going to be challenging for, challenging for us, but <laughs> we are going to work on all the things that you guys are telling me about. Okay? I, I promise you that. Bueno, vamos a ver por acá. Eh, Rodrigo Hernández. Eh, recuerdo que Rodrigo estuvo conmigo antes. Así que vamos a ver si Rodrigo me puede contar algo. Vamos a ver, Rodrigo. Hello, Rodrigo. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Good. That's nice. Very good, Rodrigo. Thank you. Nice to see you again. All right. So, bueno, muchas gracias a todos por participar. Eh, creo que quizá vamos a quedarnos hasta allí con esta parte. Eh, a continuación, quería mostrarles un poco acerca de, de lo que vamos a estar viendo. Como les mencioné anteriormente, tenemos estos temas. Ok. Eh, cada día vamos a estar desarrollando un tema. Eh, yo les voy a explicar por mi parte lo que el tema, y luego ustedes si tienen preguntas pueden hacerlas y también vamos a practicar ¿ok? de eso se trata siempre vamos a estar haciendo actividades para que sea dinámica la clase, no quiero que solamente estar yo todo el tiempo aquí hablando y que ustedes me escuchen todo el tiempo porque no es así ok, so for the first topic guys we have relative pronouns as subjects ok, that's going to be our first topic of the week we have the objective first, I'm sorry about that but I need to mention this first. So by the end of this lecture, participants will be able to use relative pronouns, who and that, as subjects, okay? So vamos a ver, vamos a ver qué tal andamos de gramática. Eh, ¿Qué saben ustedes acerca de los pronombres relativos? ¿Qué son los pronombres relativos? A ver. What do you think that this is? Relative pronouns. What is, what is that? Teníamos los pronombres, ¿verdad? Creo que ustedes eso ya se los pueden todos de memoria. Que es como que I, you, he, she, it, all of that, right? Pero aquí tenemos los pronombres relativos. ¿Qué son los pronombres relativos? It's like a connector between two, two phrases. Very good, very good. Thank you, Jonathan. That's very good. Thank you. Vamos a ver, ¿quién más? ¿Qué piensan ustedes de lo que dijo Jonathan? Jonathan dice que es eh, un, como un conector para unir eh, como dos eh, oraciones, por así decirlo. What do you guys think? That's Maybe good. the uh, relative pronouns is when you don't, you don't say specific uh, people, for example, 
um, you don't know who is this person or you can say, ah, he, she, or it, or say he have the problem or he feel, I don't know, maybe it's the fault to say the, the specific people or ask who, but no, not say the, the name, I don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Very, very good. So yeah, basically that's what it is, what both are correct, Evelyn and Jonathan. So basically a relative pronoun is like a word that we use uh, to describe a noun. Let's say, let's say something like that, right? So like something that helps us to connect two ideas. Okay, eh, no sé si ustedes lo vieron antes, pero bueno, por si no. Eh, tenemos en inglés lo que se llaman las cláusulas, que son como oraciones. Tenemos cláusulas dependientes y también tenemos cláusulas independientes. Okay, una cláusula independiente es una oración que tiene sentido por sí sola. No necesita más. Okay? Eh, por ejemplo, pueden decir, so, uh, uh, I, like, uh, I like flowers or I like uh, pixel, and that makes sense, right? Eh, es una oración que tiene sentido por sí sola. Pero por otro lado tenemos eh, las cláusulas relativas, que son oraciones que no tienen sentido a menos de que estén conectadas eh, con otra oración, que es la oración principal. Okay? Eso es lo que tenemos por acá. Eh, tenemos aquí, digamos... Los pronombres relativos nos sirven para unir ese tipo de oraciones. ¿okay? Tenemos acá la, una cláusula, sería esta, por ejemplo. Dice, I like guys. Then we have the other clause. It's going to be the dependent clause. And it says, they aren't too serious. ¿okay? Si solamente decimos, they aren't too serious, probablemente no tenga mucho sentido. Vamos a quedarnos así como que, ¿de quién estamos hablando? ¿okay? Entonces, eh, nosotros vamos a utilizar estos pronombres relativos, que son estas palabras como who and that, son los pronombres relativos, estas palabras de acá, que nos van a servir para, para unir dos oraciones o dos cláusulas, una dependiente y la otra independiente. ¿Okay? Entonces tenemos por acá, I like guys who aren't too serious, or I like guys that aren't too serious. ¿Okay? Si se fijan acá, esta palabra sirve como conector, como estaba diciendo Jonathan, para unir estas dos oraciones. ¿okay? Vamos a ver por acá. Pero a ver. Let me just see, guys, just a moment. Vamos a ver. Bueno, les voy a compartir por acá en la presentación. Luego vamos a regresar a eso otra vez. All right, so we have this. It says, what is a relative pronoun? A relative pronoun is a is a pronoun that it is used to introduce a relative clause. In particular, relative pronouns usually introduce relative clauses that describe nouns or other pronouns. Bueno, dice aquí, eh, un pronombre relativo es un pronombre que es utilizado para introducir una cláusula relativa. En particular, eh, los pronombres relativos usualmente introducen cláusulas relativas que describen nombres o otros pronombres. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver acá. Aquí tenemos un ejemplo que dice uh, Find me the book that has money hidden in it. Okay, encuéntrame el libro que tiene el dinero escondido. Entonces acá el, el pronombre relativo that nos está, nos está ayudando a conectar estas dos ideas y nos está dando más información acerca de, en este caso, el nombre que tenemos acá que es el libro. Okay, el libro que tiene el dinero oculto, que tiene el, el dinero escondido. Entonces, para eso sirve. Vamos a ver por acá, ¿qué más? Dice, a relative clause is a type of subordinate clause, which means that it can stand by itself as a complete sentence. Esto es lo que les estaba explicando antes, que tenemos dos tipos de cláusulas. Tenemos las independientes y tenemos las cláusulas uh, dependientes, ¿ok? Si se fijan acá, tenemos la oración eh, que dice, vamos a ver, Uh, Jeff is a friend. Tenemos esta oración acá. Jeff is a friend. Y dice acá, la cláusula puede permanecer por sí sola. No necesita de más. ¿Ok? Tiene sentido. Jeff es un amigo. Pero tenemos la otra cláusula, la otra oración, que es dependiente, la cual no tendría sentido por sí sola. Dice, who is always there for me? Si ustedes dicen solamente eso, no tendría sentido. ¿Ok? Quien está siempre allí para mí. ¿Ok? 
pero ¿quién? O sea, ¿de quién estamos hablando? Entonces, esa es una cláusula que es dependiente, con una oración dependiente, porque necesita de otra oración, de una cláusula dependiente, independiente, perdón, para poder tener sentido. Y nosotros las, las unimos utilizando los pronombres relativos, que son los que estábamos viendo por acá. Se los voy a mostrar otra vez. ¿Ok? Es estos que están acá. Who and that. ¿Ok? Are we good, guys? Do you have any questions so far about this? Any questions? ¿Vamos bien? Sí, sure. Uh -huh. I have a question. Uh -huh. Only who and that is pronoun or um, is more? Very good question. So, yeah, but it's not a very good question. Uh, that's excellent. We actually have other relative pronouns like which and whom or whose. We have other. Tenemos varios, la verdad. Muy buena pregunta, Dinora. Eh, tenemos otros pronombres relativos. Pero en este caso, eh, para la lección, solamente nos han dado estos dos. Para dejarlo simple. Okay, porque estamos hablando, es otra cosa que les quería eh, comentar. Casi siempre las eh, lecciones tienen como un, eh, como un objetivo, un, un target, por así decirlo. En este caso es para hablar acerca de personas en las que de las cuales nosotros eh, nos gustan o no nos gustan, por, por así decirlo. Entonces, eh, acá, por eso vamos a utilizar who and that, porque estamos hablando de una persona, ¿ok? Porque si se fijan acá, tenemos esta oración que dice, I like guys uh, that aren't too serious, or I like guys that have a good sense of humor. ¿Ok? Estamos hablando acerca de qué tipo de personas nosotros preferimos. Preferimos personas que no son muy serias, o preferimos personas que tienen un buen sentido del humor. Entonces, eh, pero sí hay otros. Hay otros eh, pronombres relativos. De hecho, ahí se lo voy a compartir después. Eh, so, ok, any other question, guys? Uh, besides that. But very good, very good. Thank you so much, Dinora. I appreciate that. And vamos a escuchar quizás por aquí, si no tenemos preguntas, vamos a escuchar un poquito acerca de, de esto, de este video para que podamos quizás eh, profundizar más en el tema, ¿ok? So, uh, let's uh, listen to the video really quick, guys. It just lasts for, I think, that four minutes, maybe. So, let's pay attention to the video, please. Hello, everyone. In this class, you learn how to describe the kind of people you like to hang around with. For example, I like friends who aren't too serious. You'll learn how to use the relative pronouns who or that. Now let me get started by presenting the structure. We'll do a few examples and at the end of the class I would like for you to practice by making your own examples. Let me talk about the first example that you see here, relative pronouns as subjects. So in essence what we want to do in this class is we want to take two pieces of information. For example, I like guys. They are into serious. That's the second piece of information. And what we want to do is we want to combine these two pieces of information and we do this by using the relative pronouns. We're either going to use who or that to combine those two pieces of information. So at the end, what the sentence is going to look like is I like guys who are into serious. Or you could say I like guys that are into serious. I'm going to write down those examples to make sure that we're understanding the process. The first example states, I like guys, they are into serious. And what we do is, if you notice in gray up here, and I actually colored that in blue in the bottom, because that's what I want to focus on. Um, here, this statement here could vary, it could change to different things, right? Like you can say, I like guys, I like friends, okay? I like people. So that could vary, you could change that to whatever you want. You can have another phrase there, like, I uh, like to hang around people, I like to be with friends, etc. That phrase could change, not just necessarily I like guys. And then they are into serious. Um, in this case, I want you to notice that we're using adjectives. All right? So whenever you use adjectives, what you're going to have in this uh, second statement is going to be uh, the verb to be either positive or negative. Okay? Um, and, then the, and then that's going to follow the adjective. And so what I want you to notice at this time is how we take these two pieces of information and we combine them together with the usage of the relative pronouns who or that. So let me give that example now. 
I like guys who aren't too serious. I like guys that aren't too serious. Yeah. All right, guys, so there are just a couple of things that I wanted to uh, tell you uh, before we continue. So we have a couple of things here. Uh, so he's telling us, uh, just like I told you before, that we have these uh, relative pronouns to uh, join these uh, two ideas together. And then uh, he's also telling us that when it comes to this, like this uh, noun here, guys, uh, we can change it for something else, right? You can say, I like people, I like friends, I like uh, whatever, uh, like, like say I like boys, I like girls, that kind of things. And then uh, the other thing is that when it comes to the second uh, clause, like the dependent clause, we are going to remove the, the subject and we are going to change that with the relative pronoun. Like in this case, who or that, right? So I like guys, then we remove this part and then we uh, write instead who, or that, okay? So I like guys who aren't too serious. Another thing that he mentioned is that in this case, we are using an adjective right here, okay? So this is something that describes the, in this case, the subject, okay? So when that happens, you are going to have the verb to be. It's gonna be positive or it's going to be negative. It can be either way, right? Like in this case, they aren't too serious. We have the next example here, example number two, which is a little different, okay? We don't have uh, an adjective here. Si se fijan acá en el de abajo, no tenemos un adjetivo. Entonces acá no tenemos el verbo to be. Cuando tengamos un adjetivo como este acá, en nuestra oración, en esta cláusula, digamos, dependiente, pues utilizaríamos el verbo to be con los adjetivos. Por otra parte acá, si se fijan, dice, I like guys, they have a good sense of humor. Acá no tenemos un adjetivo. Acá lo que tenemos es como un nombre, ¿ok? Tienen un buen sentido del humor, ¿ok? Esto sería como un nombre. Un buen sentido del humor, ¿ok? Nos estamos refiriendo acerca de eso. No es una, una cualidad como en la parte de arriba, que es de ser serio o no ser serio. Es una cualidad de un sujeto. Pero acá es tener un buen sentido del humor. Un buen sentido del humor, ¿ok? Es diferente. Bueno, vamos a seguir. No sé si tienen alguna duda con lo que acabo de explicar. Solamente era como para hacer un énfasis en lo que acabo de explicar. ¿Ok? Acá esto se puede cambiar. El sujeto, este pronombre lo quitamos. Ponemos un pronombre relativo. Puede ser cualquiera de estos dos. ¿Ok? Let's go ahead, Daniela. Thank you. How can I know what's the best pronouns when I need to use? Because I'm I'm reading the, say, but the first sentence that say, I like guys, they aren't too serious. In the next, at the next is, I like guys who or that aren't too serious. How mm -hmm. can I know what's the best pronouns I can use, can I use? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can understand my. I think I know what you're trying to say, yes. So basically you're asking uh, whether to use who or that. Yes. Which one is going to be the best. That's it. Right, so that's an excellent question. And in this case, you can use uh, either one of them. Like for okay. example, you can say who or that, and it's going to be the same meaning. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sí, muy buena pregunta, Daniela. Eh, cuando veamos nosotros así como, eh, como en este caso tenemos who y tenemos eh, diagonal eh, that, básicamente lo que nos quiere decir es de que podemos utilizar cualquiera y no hay ningún problema. Son intercambiables, por así decirlo. Entonces, podemos utilizar cualquiera de los dos y va a estar bien. Si ustedes dicen, I like guys who aren't too serious, that's fine. Or if you want to say, I like guys that aren't too serious, then that's fine too. ¿Ok? Bueno, vamos a seguir entonces con el video. Now, what I want to explain here is that you can either use the relative pronoun who, or you can use the relative pronoun that. And also what I want you to notice is that in um, this statement, so they will disappear. The pronoun here is they, that disappear. And we changed it to they, uh, to, and we changed it to who, or we changed it to that. Okay, so I like guys who aren't too serious. This is on our first example. 
let me talk about the second example now. Yeah. And the reason this one is different is because we're no longer going to use adjectives. Uh, so that changes a little bit. Uh, but again, it's the same concept as previously. What we want to do here is we want to combine two pieces of information. What are those two pieces of information? Well, I like guys. That's one piece of information. And then they have a good sense of humor. Now, in this case, notice that we're using a verb. Um, and that's because we're using a noun to uh, mention the kind of people that we like to hang around with. So I like guys or I like friends. I mentioned that you can change this to whatever you like. Um, that phrase could change to something else as well. So I like the way that you would change this is to say something similar will happen, and that is that uh, the uh, pronoun on the second uh, piece of information will disappear. And that will disappear by either who or by using that. So in other words, the statement will state, I like guys that have a good sense of humor, or I like guys who have a good sense of humor. Now let me get you to do a few examples. I'm, we're going to do one last one together, and then I'm going to have you do a few more. We want to take these two pieces of information. I like to meet people. They are sociable. So we got two pieces of information, and what we want to do here is we want to put these two together. We're just going to remove the pronoun they, and we're going to change it for a relative pronoun, either who or that. So that was quite simple. I like to meet people who are sociable. And I mentioned you can either say, I like to meet people that are sociable. Bueno, okay. Entonces acá eh, vamos solamente... This is... So, vamos a ver rapidito por acá, guys. <coughs> Perdón. Bueno, entonces acá les está explicando exactamente lo que yo este, les comentaba hace un momento. Tenemos en el segundo ejemplo, acá no es un adjetivo, ¿ok? Acá teníamos serious, es un adjetivo, but the second example we don't have that. It just says I like guys, they have good sense of humor, and then you can say either I like guys who have a good sense of humor, or you can say, I like guys that have a good sense of humor. So in that case, we are not using the verb to be because we are we don't have an adjective. So that's basically like the most important thing. Vamos a ver por acá. Luego tenemos este otro ejemplo. Dice, I like people, they are sociable. So basically we have an adjective here. That's the reason why we have the verb to be. Okay, they are sociable. I like to meet people that are sociable or I like to meet people who are sociable so basically that's it vamos a ver entonces no sé qué eh, bueno me gustaría que ustedes me digan eh, más o menos lo que han entendido hasta ahora acerca del tema vamos a ver quién me puede eh, digamos contar lo que acabamos de ver quiero que ustedes me lo digan a mí porque esto sirve para ver si de verdad eh, hemos entendido y aparte de eso lo estamos reforzando ¿verdad? vamos a ver Kevin you can go ahead Sure, we're talking about the relative pronouns. Basically, you are talking about a subject or a person, a thing, and doing something, and the way that it connects between one idea and the other, using a clause that is basically who to describe a person, and that to describe an activity or something or someone that is doing something whose name we do not know. So I think that that's the idea. It's like when we use in Spanish, the subjunctive um, sentence and the regular sentence. Very good. Very, very good. Thank you so much, Kevin. That's awesome. Great job. Muy bien. So just like Kevin said, uh, basically, we are trying to join uh, two ideas, right? We have these uh, w words, who and that, that we call relative pronouns. That's something that we use so we can join the two ideas, right? Vamos a ver, ¿alguien más que quiera decir algo acerca de esto? Vamos a ver. Anyone else? Tenemos por allá Walter, creo que tal vez Walter quiera compartir algo. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think about I uh, I was thinking about the question the um I don't remember her name but she was asking about which one is better who or that mm -hmm. and I think that it depends on the context you are talking about mm -hmm. because in my case I prefer to use who mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it depends on what you are saying. And why or, do you think so, or, Walter? Uh, could you give me like an example no. where you think that would be better to use who instead of that? Um, guys who love to play soccer, mm -hmm. uh, they are healthier than us because we are working over 20 hours, over nine hours daily, I think. Mm -hmm. Who plays, I think that is better that if mm -hmm. I say, guys that play that play i think there is it sounds better i think okay because the master practice uh, we are to about understand which one is better in uh, different cases mm -hmm. we live very good okay very good yes that's very good i think that i think i understand what you're saying like it sounds better so did you feel that way? That's fine. Just like I mentioned before, I think that probably you can use either one of them and still is going to have like the same meaning. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like it sounds better, then that's fine. Yeah, I think yeah. you can do that. Okay. Hmm? Very good. Thank you, Walter. Now I can hear you. I don't know what, what I was going Thanks. on before, but I couldn't hear I you. I think that I need to change my, my computer, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> later, <laughs> by the end of this year. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Bueno, okay. muchas, muchas gracias, Walter. Eh, entonces, entonces, hasta ahorita nos hemos quedado en esa parte, ¿ok? Eh, creo que todos lo hemos entendido bastante bien. Y tenemos acá dos cosas más importantes que tenemos que discutir, que es acá donde dice pronombres relativos como objetos, pronombres relativos como sujetos, ¿ok? Porque, eh, déjenme explicarles esto, cuando se trata de una oración, Tenemos el objeto de la oración, tenemos el sujeto de la oración, ¿ok? Eh, el sujeto por lo general pues es de quien se está hablando y el objeto va a ser sobre quien recae la acción, ¿ok? So, like in this case, we have, let me, let me give you an example here. Vamos a ver, vamos a darle un poquito para atrás. So, it says, uh, relative pronouns are subjects, ¿ok? Tenemos acá esta nueva oración que formamos con el pronombre relativo. Dice, I like guys who aren't too serious. Okay? So in this case, the relative pronoun is a sub. So why? En este caso estamos diciendo, me gustan, digamos, eh, los muchachos, por así decirlo, que no son tan eh, serios. Okay? En este caso, este pronombre está funcionando como un sujeto. Estamos hablando... De ellos, por así decirlo, ¿ok? No es sobre el pronombre que está recayendo la acción, a diferencia del que está aquí abajo, que todavía no lo hemos visto, pero lo vamos a ver el día de mañana, ¿ok? Dice, pronombres relativos como objeto, ¿ok? Es la misma palabra acá, pero en este caso funciona como un objeto en la oración. ¿Por qué es eso? Porque sobre esta palabra es la que recae la acción. Okay, por ejemplo, acá dice, I prefer someone who I can talk to easily. Okay, estamos hablando que preferimos a alguien con quien hablar. Okay, básicamente acá la acción recae sobre esa, ese pronombre. Por ejemplo, acá dice, eh, yo prefiero a alguien con quien eh, divertirme. Okay, con quien divertirme. Esa parte es la clave. Estamos hablando de... Eh, en la acción que recae sobre el pronombre en este caso a diferencia de acá, acá está funcionando como un sujeto estamos diciendo eh, los, los muchachos que no son tan serios o estamos hablando de eh, los muchachos que tienen un buen sentido del humor en cambio acá es alguien con quien eh, yo puedo hablar, alguien con quien yo puedo divertirme o sea la acción recae sobre el objeto, ok Entonces ahí está la diferencia. Eh, lo vamos a ver mañana, porque ya se nos acabó el tiempo. Vamos a practicarlo. Ustedes van a poder dar ejemplos acerca de esto y vamos a discutirlo en la clase el día de mañana. ¿okay? Así que no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta, guys, antes de que nos vayamos. ¿Alguna duda? No question. No question for today. All right, very good. Uh, no teacher. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dinora. Thank, thank you. you. Well, so I think that that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the first class. Remember, we have classes tomorrow. Then we have classes on Wednesday. Then we have the day off on Thursday. And then we come back on Friday, right? So uh, thank you, guys. I hope you guys have a great evening. And I will see you tomorrow. See you, see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye. Have a good night.